Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today we have a new build. If you don't know what it is, then you must be new here. It's a 2004 Pontiac Grand Am GT two-door. It's got pretty low miles on it and I bought it for scrap price. So it's worth saving, at least to me, not to the haters. It needs quite a bit of work, but it's a quick job for me. So let's get into it. So with only 84,000 miles and the amount of people that wanted my 03, I figured this wouldn't be a bad buy. Now it only needs a few body parts, a fender, a hood, a bumper, headlight, some other little stuff, but it does need one big thing, and that's a frame rail. Now these can be sectioned, but they're so easy to replace, I'm just gonna replace it all. I'll drop the engine and trans, change that frame rail, throw it all back together. It's a one day job. Like I said before, these things are easy to work on. You won't find any other car you can do it that fast in. So it was listed as a no start at the auction. Let's see if we can get lucky and get it off this trailer. Oh, I don't think that battery is going to hold a charge. There isn't one. And it got hit so hard, the alternator got knocked out. Somebody's been here before. The hefty cable. Looks like they had a system in it because the radio's missing. So I'd imagine they had a special battery and a bigger alternator. So I guess they wanted to keep those. Well, let's see. Find out if I made a good buy. Somebody wasn't wearing their seatbelt. This little guy has been sitting at the auction for a while, so it doesn't surprise me that the lifters are making a little bit of noise. Hopefully it'll quiet down once they fill up with oil. So, we'll make sure it goes in the gear and does a small burnout. I don't know why my paint doesn't last on the deck. Let's get it off the trailer. We'll pull off our straps. We strap it down like I'm going across the country, even on the short trips, because even on short trips, things can happen. I learned that the hard way. So, I'm going to strap it down, make sure it's not going anywhere. We pull out our ramps, because I'm too poor to buy a tilt bed trailer. And they're really not all that practical anyway, so I'll save the money. Alright, you guys know the procedure. Say it with me. If you've ever owned a Grand Am, you know why working windows is somewhat of a rare option. Ah! First thing we need to do is get the alternator back on this thing so we can put our belt on and have all of our accessories. Luckily, Scott's Grand Am Emporium had an alternator in stock and all the hardware to put it on. So, let's throw the bolt in the front. There's a stud in the back. The nut actually holds the bracket for the power steering line. And there's another bolt in the back. Then we'll tighten all those down. Then we'll be able to use all of our accessories. And it was a little hard to turn with no power steering. And even worse, it was a little hot in the car with no air conditioning. We'll pull this electrical tape off the power cable. Uh, I don't know if they did this when they took the alternator off because they spent a lot of time wrapping that up so that it wouldn't short on anything or if maybe they had some other cable that had run to the battery from the alternator and this had been tucked up somewhere they seemed to put a lot of effort into it if they were just junking the car anyway seems like they would have just pulled it apart and thrown it in there 
it didn't have a battery in it anyway, so I don't know. Either way, we need to get this electrical tape off because we're putting it back to stock. I think we got it all off of there. Or at least enough of it that we can hook our terminal back up. We're also going to have to replace all of our battery cables with the original ones. Luckily, I know a guy that might have a couple. We have to go with the primitive hand tools and feel like dragging out the electric tools and they don't fit in here all that well anyway. So, tighten up all of our nuts and bolts. Make sure you torque them down to manufacture specs. Now we can put our belt back on. They couldn't take the belt out. In order to get these belts out, you have to pull the engine mount out. I guess they didn't want to do that. So at least it's still in there. We can get it back on. We don't have to worry about pulling that mount out. We'll just put our ratchet in the tensioner and release the tension. Drop around the idler pulley. Or at least try sure our belt's on all the rest of our pulleys. We should be good to go. Hopefully our air conditioning works now. So it was a lot easier to get it into the corner when we had power steering and more importantly air conditioning. And it does work. So now we're going to start pulling it all apart. We'll unbolt our hood. We're just going to take the hinges off the hood. Just four bolts that hold it on. No wires. Nothing else. And this is the start of our pile. Pull out this closeout panel, Got a bunch of push pins. These are little trim clip pliers for that. Those are available in my Amazon store if you want to check them out. We'll set the prop right off to the side. I'm not throwing that piece in the pile just yet. Not sure if I have an extra, might be reusing that one. I'll we'll take off the duct for the ram air push pins across the bottom of it. Now we can throw in the pile. And then we're going to take off the duct for the front part of the ram air. It directs the air up over the radiator and through that other duct. Now we can pull our headlight out with our multi-purpose trim clip pliers. Just pull up on the little tabs and wiggle it out of there. Disconnect our bulbs. And then we'll try not to break the collar that holds the headlight bulb in. We're going to bolt what's left of our headlight mounting panel. Unplug our coolant level sensor and our cruise unit. And we'll fish the wiring harness out of here. Just going to take this whole harness out. It goes with the headlight mounting panel. There is one clip down underneath the overflow bottle. And the wiring harness is trapped in the frame rail. Not supposed to be there. So we're going to disconnect it from our headlight mounting panel. I'm just using the impact to squeeze the tabs. There's not actually a bolt on there. 
That way we can get this headlight mounting panel out of the way. We'll have to wait until we pull that framer out a little bit to get that harness out of there. In the pile. Now we can unbolt the airbox, pull the hose clamp off the throttle body, pull the breather tube out, disconnect the mass airflow sensor and the air temp sensor. There's one bolt in the back. There's supposed to be one in the front, but the accident took that out for us. I don't care about my car's extended warranty. So now we're going to wiggle this thing out of there. Now we can unbolt our battery tray. There's three bolts in it. This nut for the bottom of the airbox doesn't want to come off. So we're just going to work it back and forth to clean up the rust on the threads until it finally gives up and comes off. Saves having to replace that stud later if we can not break it now. Now we'll get our battery tray removal tool. Place it gently under the battery tray so not to break it. And then we'll apply some downward pressure. And carefully remove the battery tray. I win in the pile. Now we'll unbolt our fender from the rail up at the top. A couple bolts in the back hold the hinge down as well. We'll unbolt the rest of the headlight mounting panel. This is one of those new 500 piece designs. Now we can unbolt what's left of our wheel liner so we can get to the bolts inside for the fender. There's a couple push pins in there. They also hold in this rocker molding and we'll pull those out. And there's some two sided tape across the top. We'll just use our little handleless spatula, cut through that. There's a clip in the back and rather than trying to unclip it, we're just gonna slide the rocker molding off the clip and take it out later. Now we can unbolt the bottom of our fender and at least try. I think those are bolts. They were at one time. But it's an Illinois car, so they tend to get a little rusty. And the head of the bolt that was once a 10 millimeter becomes something like an 8.6 millimeter. So I hope you have that socket. Where did the threads go? And there's one bolt on the top of the fender inside the door. So we'll pull that out. They were nice enough to mount it in a tiny, fragile little bracket that if you're not careful, you can rip right off of the pillar. Now we can get that bolt out that's in the middle of the fender behind the wheel liner that we removed. We can pull our fender out of here. Slide it out of there. We don't have to take the rocker molding off. Toss that in the pile. We glued that one on. Now we're going to drain the radiator. We're just going to pull the drain plug out of the bottom. We'll use a pair of pliers. There is a square in the center of it that's a quarter inch, so a quarter inch ratchet fits right in there. But don't be fooled, it doesn't actually work to remove the plug. You gotta kinda pull out and turn it at the same time. I'm guessing it's there for assembly because it goes right in with the ratchet, but definitely doesn't come out. Now we can unbolt our bumper absorber. We'll pull the fog light off of it so we don't have a break in that. Things are hard to find in one piece anyway. We get the two bolts out of our U-bolt. It holds our absorber on. One bolt, the bottom of the radiator support. It's just a plastic piece that goes across the bottom, holds the radiator up in there. I'm gonna push it down so we can push the radiator back a little bit to get to the other bolts in there. Take our absorber off the top of our absorber. It actually gives the bumper a little shape. And there's a couple of nuts on the inside. Put a ratcheting wrench on those. Just get them started and we can actually take these off by hand. And now I'll introduce you to a new tool in our arsenal. It's our energy absorber remover. Just apply a little pressure and it comes right off. And now we're just going to give it a little twist and toss that in the pile. And the rest of it, wiggle it out of there. I need to remove those bolts. Now we can pull off the air baffle for the bottom of the air box. This is where the regular air goes. The high performance air goes through the ram air ducting and that adds 15 horsepower. Not because of the ducting, but because they put the badges on the side that says it has ram air. Now that that's out of the way, we can unbolt our bracket for our washer bottle. There's a metal bracket on the back and it's riveted onto the plastic washer bottle. 
the rest of the duct off the top. And then we'll get to the bolt that was supposed to be holding it on. Pull our wiring harness out of the way. Drop our washer bottle down. We can disconnect the wires that are on the inside. They're for the level sensor and the pump. And we'll pull the washer hose off and make a mess. Trying not to make a mess, but all these wires seem to want me to make a mess. We don't want to let go. They like their friend. They have separation anxiety. We're going to unbolt the rest of our fender bracket. Toss that in a pile. Now we can get a better look at some of our damage now that all these parts are out of the way. That frame rail is pretty wrinkled up, and yet it still didn't set off the airbags. They're still in there and they're still good, so it wasn't hit right. If it had been hit like this on the other rail, I'm sure the airbags would have gone off because the impact sensor is on the passenger side of the car. It's also going to need a subframe. It's folded up a little bit. You can straighten them, but Scott's Grand Am Emporium has a few. So we'll just change it. There's a little bit of work to do on the right side rail. We'll have a better look at that when we get some parts off. So the AC machine just finished doing its thing. Turns out the AC system and the cooling system were both full. Now be honest, was this worse than you were expecting? It's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. But then again, I fixed, I don't know, a few hundred of these, so there's no surprises left. Next time, we're gonna pull more of this apart because there is some damage you haven't seen yet. Then we'll start fixing it. So, till next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.